Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us here today at the Traffic Management Center in the city. We are a day away from the beginning of a 30-day shutdown of the Orange Line trains and the alternative service that the city of Boston has been working very hard with neighboring municipalities and the MBTA to stand up in record time uh, to make sure that there are options available for all of our residents and commuters who need to get where they're trying to go um, as fall starts and with the beginning of the school year as well. This has been an all hands on deck cross departmental effort for the city of Boston. And I'm so grateful to all of our teams, some of the cabinets who are represented here for really ensuring that we could provide additional support on top of what the MBTA has been doing to reach out to our residents, to provide that multilingual information and uh, feedback and, and getting folks ideas, as well as ensuring that the routes that are running on Boston streets above ground as alternatives will be as smooth as possible. Just last night, the MBTA also announced that they are adding an additional Chinatown shuttle bus stop um, for the SL4, making an, a Silver Line 4 route, making an additional stop in Chinatown as one more measure to be responsive to our residents' concerns about how this uh, shutdown will impact their daily lives and particularly access to the necessities in their lives. Um, some of the key work that has been happening across the city, uh, represented by our cabinet chiefs, you'll hear shortly from our chief of streets, Yasha Franklin Hodge, on the volumes of, of work that his team, amazing team, uh, have been doing. They're gathered right on the other side of this. Um, our Chief of Equity and Inclusion, Maria Angeli Soli Cervera, has been overseeing efforts through her cabinet to really engage all of our community members as well. We hosted an, a, an information session and conversation with immigrant serving organizations and community leaders, including multilingual media in City Hall to walk through all of the alternatives and the details. We have had Zoom sessions with community members. We have had uh, neighborhood sessions, for example, in Chinatown. And I wanna thank them for all that they're doing to ensure that we can provide the necessary details so people can plan out how they will get around. Our community engagement cabinet led by Chief Brianna Malore has been hard at work already. Um, they are distributing a flyer in 11 different languages that summarizes the alternatives available. They've been engaging residents in all of our neighborhoods and will be on the ground throughout this shutdown to help answer questions and uh, facilitate people getting to their destinations and understanding what the options are. And our Chief of Economic Opportunity and Inclusion, Shigun Idowu, has been um, an incredible leader in working very closely with our business community on the particular impacts that our small and large businesses will be experiencing. And I want to thank Jim Rooney and the Boston, Greater Boston Chamber of Commerce for being such a strong partner. They have worked very closely with Chief Idowu and have stood up their own website with particular information for uh, their membership and have been facilitating conversations. We've been on many Zoom and, and in-person meetings with them as well. Uh, some of what you'll hear in a little bit really describe the, um, give some detail to the city's role in helping to smooth the alternatives during this shutdown. We have been working hard to ensure that the shuttle buses have enough space to load and unload, um, particularly in key stops. For example, um, near Back Bay Station, where some of us got on the test run shuttle bus to ride the, the southern route from Forest Hills to Copley Station. Um, there will be some significant changes that, that have already started to be marked on the ground. A bus only lane so that the buses have the most room and speed to be able to uh, get started on their routes, as well as some bus only areas that will ensure that uh, these shuttle buses don't get stuck in um, as much traffic as, as usually would be experienced. We've also been working with our providers to, our partners to ensure that there are other options. In addition, uh, Blue Bikes will be offering 30-day free passes 
where any ride up to 45 minutes will be free. Uh, and we're very thankful for this additional option as well as DCR and others for ensuring that the pathways and, and Southwest Corridor in particular will be accessible and smoothed out, but um, not disrupted or impacted during the bulk of this shutdown. Um, the commuter rail will be effectively free for residents as well. Anyone who can show a Charlie card will be able to board for free at the st stations that are in Zone 1A, Zone 1, or Zone 2. That, that includes every single station within the city of Boston. Uh, and we will be providing free Charlie cards for anyone who needs it. Our libraries have free cards and um, our neighborhood services teams will have them as well. Again, you just need the policy to board the commuter rail during the shutdown within the city of Boston stations is just to show the card. It does not need to be loaded with funds. It will not be charged. Um, and so that that is likely the best bet for many folks who are trying to commute from Forest Hills, for example, to downtown, hop on that commuter rail uh, from Forest Hills to get out either at Back Bay Ruggles or South Station. The frequency will be uh, twice the usual pickup. And so every 30 minutes, there will be a train coming through at Forest Hills and um, others in, in the other direction coming from the north of the city as well. Um, let me make sure I covered everything here. OK, so here's a key website. If you have other questions or um, want to just get an overview of the options that are available. We have our city website at boston.gov slash orange line, or you can call 311 for information on that. The website is available in 11 different languages. Um, and finally, in English, uh, we do just want to emphasize that this is going to be a um, particularly impactful experience for our students who are coming back to school and the last week of this shutdown overlapping with the first week of Boston Public Schools new school year. And so BPS has been working to ensure that our students, families, teachers and staff can get to school, can plan out their routes, can see what is happening. Um, BPS has secured 5,000 Charlie cards free for um, students and families loaded with seven day passes so that families can go with their students and map out, try out these alternative routes. If you're going to consider taking a different bus route to school or going on the commuter rail, even ahead of this shutdown, these seven day passes are available for everyone to just go a couple times, try different ways, see what feels most comfortable. Um, as the school year starts, students arriving late because of transportation issues and, and in general um, will not be penalized. And we will provide more updates on the BPS sides as we get closer to the start of school as well. Um, I, I want to mention something that I forgot that I know Chief Idawu will, will jump in on as well. One um, major part of the conversation between the city of Boston and our business community partners is to not just be flexible uh, for your workforce that is going to be impacted whether or not they're directly on the orange line or coming in a different way and facing more delays or more traffic and congestion, please ensure that you're not penalizing any of your workforce for coming in late or not being able to make it on time because this will impact every single commuter. Um, that your, your commute will be affected in some way, even if not directly on the orange line. At the city of Boston, we are um, encouraging and we have um, continued the the policy of allowing for hybrid work at the discretion of all of our managers here in the city so that we as a workforce are also trying to model um, giving that flexibility and allowing for some decongestion of our roads wherever possible. Okay, um, and a quick summary in Espanol. Buenos días, comenzando mañana. Viernes en la noche, la línea anaranjada del sistema de tren MBTA cerrará. Luego el lunes, la línea verde extendida igual cerrará. Ambos cierres durarán hasta el 19 de septiembre. Um, hoy estamos aquí en nuestro centro de gestión de tráfico, donde el Departamento de, de Transporte va a vigilar nuestras calles y avenidas para mitigar la congestión vehicular, mientras nos adaptamos para alocar las rutas de los autobuses del MBTA.
También nos hemos reunido en varias ocasiones con organizaciones que traba, trabaja, trabajan con inmigrantes, medios de comunicación que no son en inglés y grupos comunitarios. Y nuestro Gabinete de Equidad ha estado realizando sesiones informativas para asegurar que nuestras comunidades estén preparadas para navegar adecuadamente ese cierre temporal. Nuestro jefe de oportunidades e eh, inclusión económica, uh, jefe IDU, también ha estado trabajando con socios uh, como la Cámara de Comercio de Gran Boston para asegurar el compromiso de los empleadores de todo Boston de no penalizar a los trabajadores por los retrasos relacionados con el cierre. Desde que él anunciaron los cierres, hemos coordinado con la MBTA para establecer rutas de transporte y carriles prioritarios para autobuses. En menos de dos semanas después del anuncio de la MBTA, nuestro departamento de transporte estaba en las calles marcando carriles temporales exclusivos para autobuses. Y apenas anoche, el MBTA anunció que están trabajando en agre agregar, agregar una parada adicional a lo largo de la línea es el 4 en la ruta de salida para darle servicio a la comunidad de Ch Chinatown dur durante el cierre. Habrán cientos de autobuses en las calles y por eso recomendamos a aquellos que no necesiten conducir que opten por otras alternativas de transporte como nuestros cam caminos de bicicletas o tomar una de las otras líneas de tren que atraviesan Boston. Como dije, estamos haciendo todo nuestro poder para facilitar su ruta durante este proceso, para hacer andar en bicicleta más accesible durante el cierre. Ofreceremos pases de los Blue Bikes gratuitos por 30 días. Habrá acceso a casi 4,000 bicicletas en el área metropolit metropolitana de Boston. Los pases gratuitos estarán disponibles a partir de mañana a través de la aplicación BlueBikes, um, bluebikes.com. Todos los viajes de 45 minutos o menos serán gratuitos. También puede tomar el commuter rail durante el cierre. Algunos lo conocen como el tren violeta. Las zonas 1A, 1 y 2 serán gratuitas para cualquier persona que muestre una Charlie Card o Charlie Ticket. No necesita tener ningún valor en su tarjeta para viajar en el tren suburb suburbano en esas zonas. Si no tiene una Charlie Card, están disponibles de forma gratuito, gratuita en todas las sucursales de la Biblioteca Pública de Boston y con cada uno de los empleados de camisa roja en las estaciones del tren, la MBTA ha dicho. Para preguntas, favor de visitar el sitio web de boston.gov slash orange line o llamar al 311. El sitio web está disponible en 11 idiomas diferentes. Entendemos que nuestros jóvenes regresarán a la escuela pronto y estamos trabajando con BPS para garantizar que nuestros estudiantes, familias, maestros y personal puedan ac acceder a las escuelas. BPS ya ha obtenido 5,000 Charlie Cards cargadas con pases de siete días para que los estudiantes y las familias puedan planear rutas alternativas antes de que empiece el año escolar. Los estudiantes que lleg lleguen tarde a clases por problemas de transporte no serán penalizados. Estaremos dando inform informes sobre este tema mientras tengamos más detalles. Y um, finalmente, como mencioné, mencioné anteriormente, le pedimos a las personas que no tengan que manejar que consideren algunas de las rutas alterna, alternas durante el cierre. Mientras más carros haya, más tráfico habrá. Y eso puede tener un impacto negativo en nuestros autobuses y vehículos de emergencia. Durante el cierre usaré los autobuses y nuestra infraestructura ciclista para moverme por Boston. Así podré mantenerme al tanto de las dificultades y intentar mejorarlas. Espero que muchos de ustedes hablen conmigo en los autobuses o me acompañen cuando vaya en bicicleta al ayuntamiento. Boston, este mes será difícil, pero con su ayuda 
Yo sé que juntos podremos sobrepasar ese cierre y con suerte daremos la bienvenida a una línea naranja más segura en un mes. Ahora invito al jefe Franklin Hodge a hablar. Uh, thank you very much, Mayor, uh, and thank you all. So, from on the first day that the MBTA reached out to us to let us know that they were considering an extended shutdown of the Orange Line, I got very clear and my team got very clear direction from Mayor Wu. And that was to do everything that we can as a city to support riders and to keep Boston moving. Uh, for the reasons that the mayor spoke about, we know that the work that the MBTA has planned is essential to the future of the transit system and to address the delays and the disrepair that plague Orange Line riders on their daily commutes. But we also know that this shutdown is going to be disruptive and it's going to be challenging for the city. So over the last two weeks, we have engaged in an unprecedented effort to reconfigure our streets, to boost alternative transportation options, and to help residents and businesses in Boston prepare for the shutdown. So I'm going to go through some of the specific things that we've been doing. Uh, we're going to get into a little bit of detail on some of the streets and uh, the changes that are being made. Um, But just to start with, uh, so we're creating two transit hubs to facilitate transfers between the Orange Line and the Green Line. Copley Square and Government Center is where we expect to see the highest volume of passengers and shuttle buses. And so we've set aside uh, an extensive amount of curb space in these locations to allow for efficient shuttle bus loading. We've created temporary bus lanes and restricted access along certain segments of street to make sure that the shuttle buses have the space that they need to move. In Copley Square, shuttle buses serving the southern part of the Orange Line will travel down Columbus Ave, loop around Copley Square to make connections to the Back Bay and Copley stations. Dedicated bus lanes have been added on Columbus Ave, Dartmouth Street, Boylston, and Clarendon Streets. Substantial parking restrictions are also in place along all of these streets to allow for safe and accessible loading of buses. The block of Dartmouth Street between St. James and Boylston Street will be closed to general traffic and open only for buses to make sure that they have the space they need to queue and to operate and load passengers. At Government Center, the shuttle buses that are serving both the northern part of the Orange Line and the Union Square branch of the, the Green Line uh, will all board at Government Center. So dedicated bus lanes have been added on Congress Street, State Street, Court Street, and Cambridge Street. Um, as with Copley, Copley, there will be extensive parking restrictions on all of these streets. In addition, the block of State Street between Congress Street and Washington Street will be closed to general traffic. Through traffic coming up State Street will be diverted, and only buses will be allowed to make the right turn from Congress Street onto State Street. These changes will provide the necessary space uh, for two separate shuttle bus fleets and routes to be served from this one location. At both locations, we will ensure that there is adequate sidewalk space for people to wait. And the city is in the process of procuring tents to help make sure that there is shelter available to people in the event of inclement weather. In addition to our transit hubs, we are making changes all along the shuttle routes and on our streets. Uh, on the northern route, to speed the movement uh, of shuttles, we are working with MassDOT to implement bus priority lanes on the Gilmore Bridge, Rutherford Ave, and in Sullivan Square. In the North Station area, we will be implementing, likely next week, dedicated lanes and parking uh, along uh, Lomazny Way, Martha Road, Nashua Street. On the southern route in JP, the shuttles will be traveling along streets that typically do not carry a large volume of bus traffic. So this includes uh, Lamartine, Amory Street, and William Street. So we are making various small changes at intersections along these streets to make sure that these 45-foot-long shuttles can safely make turns uh, and don't get uh, you know, blocked by parked cars or other obstructions. To make this possible, we will be uh, temporarily removing some parking spaces to widen these intersections. Our Parks Department is also reviewing a list of places where we have trees that may be low-hanging and interfere with the shuttle buses and is accelerating tree trimming along this route. In some spots, there may be turn restrictions added to reduce the amount of general traffic that may interfere with the shuttle buses. So we may be diverting other cars uh, onto alternate routes to stay out of the way of the shuttles. Washington Street northbound between the Arbor Way and William Street will be closed to general traffic to allow buses to move through that congested area. We are also evaluating Tremont Street and Columbus Ave between Jackson Square and Ruggles for a potential bus priority lane uh, to be added. 
Our signals team will be conducting real-time monitoring uh, of the traffic flow along the shuttle route uh, here in the Traffic Management Center, uh, and they are prepared to make signal timing adjustments uh, throughout the shutdown to prioritize shuttle bus movements. Along the shuttle routes, our city's Disabilities Commission has uh, conducted an accessibility review of sidewalks and loading areas for all of the shuttle stops to identify any conditions that would pose a hazard for people with physical or sensory disabilities. Since the beginning of the week, the Public Works Department has been out making repairs at key locations, replacing bricks, smoothing sidewalks to make sure that the shuttle buses are in fact accessible for all. We are working closely with our public safety agencies. The Boston Police Department has been heavily involved in the planning for this shutdown. They are prepared to deploy additional personnel, especially at intersections where we need to make sure that there are people on the ground to ensure safety for all road users and to help speed shuttle bus movements through those intersections. The MBTA Police Department, in coordination with Boston Police, will also be adding extra personnel at the transit hubs and along the route. The Boston Transportation Department will be enforcing parking restrictions and issuing violations to vehicles stopped in bus-only areas. If necessary, BTD will facilitate towing of vehicles to ensure that shuttle buses can continue to move. As the mayor said, we are working to make biking accessible to more people. Uh, the publicly owned blue bike system will offer free 30-day passes beginning tomorrow. We're also adding capacity to blue bikes by expanding docks and adding valet services at key transit locations so that there are always bikes available and always a place to leave a bike. We're also putting in place some pop-up bike lanes. Uh, in, these are several locations, mostly downtown, but we're specifically targeting places where there's concern about potential for conflict between bikes and shuttle buses to make sure that they stay separated on the road. And next week, we expect to install additional bike parking corrals downtown to support commuters. Several advocacy and community-based organizations uh, are doing group rides and convoys to help less experienced riders get comfortable on a bike and to help make sure that people stay safe. And as the mayor alluded to, uh, in contrary to some of the reports we heard yesterday, the Southwest Corridor Path will be open throughout the shutdown. Uh, I was out there, I was riding on it this morning, and DCR was already uh, making uh, repairs and smoothing out pavement. So we hope that this will be a smoother ride for people who do choose to bike on that route. Uh, the city has launched a website, as the mayor said, to keep people informed, boston.gov slash orange line. These are resources intended to supplement the material that's being provided by the MBTA. This includes the flyer that the mayor mentioned, which is now, as of this morning, translated into 12 languages and is being distributed in dozens of uh, locations throughout the community, including community centers and via some of our partner organizations. The website also contains an accessibility guide specifically for people with disabilities to help them successfully navigate the shutdown down. Uh, the city's equity cabinet and Office of Economic Opportunity and, and Inclusion has con have convened numerous briefings for uh, business organizations, for healthcare organizations, higher ed, uh, for our uh, community-based organizations that serve immigrants, for residents, to help people understand what's happening, to give them a chance to ask questions, and to give feedback to the city and to the MBTA. Uh, and our Office of Neighborhood Services will have teams in the field in the initial days of the shutdown uh, at stations to help residents navigate uh, the changes and find their way to where they're going uh, to su supplement the uh, navigation support that the MBTA will be providing. And our 311 team has resources available to them to make sure that they can answer any resident questions uh, that they receive. Lastly, I want to talk about how we will be working during the shutdown. Uh, our work does not end when the shutdown begins. Uh, all the things I've described have come together extraordinarily quickly, and there will be lots more to do in the coming weeks. We will monitor what's happening on the ground, what's working, what's not, and we will adapt. To do this, we're establishing strong ongoing communication with the MBTA, MassDOT, our public safety agencies, and surrounding communities. MBTA staff will be embedded here in the Traffic Management Center throughout the shutdown, and the Boston Transportation Department will have staff located at the MassDOT Operations Center. The city team has demonstrated extraordinary focus and agility uh, to get us where we are uh, in such a short period of time. Uh, many of my team members are here, and I'm immensely grateful for the incredible work that they have put in to make this possible. Uh, we will stay nimble, uh, and we will continue to work throughout the shutdown to do everything that we can. 
And I will just end by saying this. Um, we know that this month is going to be challenging, but if there's one thing that I want everyone in Boston to hear, it's that we have your back, we will get through this, and we will have a stronger transportation system when this is done. Thank you. Uh, before I turn it over to uh, my two incredible council colleagues, I want to make sure to first of all thank uh, and also turn the microphone over to Commissioner Kristen McCosh, our commissioner uh, for the Mayor's Commission for Persons with Disabilities. Commissioner McCosh has been working incredibly hard to ensure that our residents with disabilities are centered in the planning processes. We know that the MBTA system, even before this, um, has significant accessibility challenges that need to be resolved and uh, this can this additional wrinkle and set of disruption for the commute makes it all the more challenging and so all of the shuttle buses that are substituting for the orange line stops are accessible but it is um, a complicated process and I want to just make sure Commissioner Makash can say a few words about the alternatives the vans the ride that will still be present as well Thank you, Mayor Wu. Um, so as the Mayor said, it's a complex situation when you're trying to deal with people who have physical and sensory disabilities. Our work is broken down into three basic areas. First of all, we're working closely with the MBTA. They have a dedicated office of system-wide accessibility that deals with access on the fixed route system. That's buses, trains, and ferry. So we've always had a close relationship with them, but we've been working with them basically on a daily basis to ensure that the shuttle buses are accessible, that the vans are accessible. They will have 20 vans located at each Orange Line station, which will transport people with disabilities who do not use the uh, coach buses. Even though the coach buses are accessible, they present unique challenges to people in wheelchairs and scooters because they have a mechanical lift, which is difficult to navigate, and they have um, a difficult, uh, a tight space to secure a wheelchair on the back. So um, that's our work ongoing with the team. As Chief Franklin Hodge said, we'll be very nimble. We'll be changing plans as we hear about complaints and uh, stay in touch with the team very closely. Secondly, we work very closely with our partners in City Hall. We're working with the Public Works Department, BTD, uh, Office of Neighborhood Services to make sure that we're responding to any issues that we hear. Our staff has walked the shuttle routes to see that the um, bus stops will be compliant, will be level, level landings, and the sidewalks are in good shape. Some of you may have seen that Public Works has already been out repairing sidewalks on the routes to maintain accessible routes for people with disabilities. And third, we're working closely with the disability community doing outreach and engagement. We have um, an accessibility guide that's available on boston.com slash so um, that's it. We'll stay in touch with the community and our partners and um, keep everybody moving throughout the shutdown. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'll hand it over to Councillors Bach and Laura. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Kenzie Bach. I represent District 8, which runs from Mission Hill through the West End. Um, so enormous uh, impacts on my district uh, for this closure. And I just wanted to say a couple of things from the District 8 perspective. Um, one is just really to thank the uh, BTD and the whole cross-departmental city team that's been working so hard on figuring out um, better resolutions for our residents and our businesses in this crisis. Um, they've been incredibly responsive and there's a million small things um, that have come up and that, as the chief said, are gonna continue to come up. So I know that we're all gonna be working on this as a work in progress. Um, I really wanna thank our businesses in places like the Back Bay and the West End in my district who are impacted by the shuttle routes that are going down. I think everyone understands that um, moving uh, you know, commuters and residents um, through the city is essential for business operations, but a lot of our businesses are being flexible in this moment, and so just wanna thank them um, and also thank our residents um, and stress the fact that you know, to the accessibility point um, that uh, the chief just raised, you know, 
it's also really important in this process that pedestrians be thought about. And another thing that I really appreciate the team doing is thinking about where our shuttle routes are, you know, places like Copley Square, Government Center, North Station, these are also major pedestrian hubs. And so I feel confident that the BTD team and our MBTA folks are well aware that we have to keep crosswalks clear and make sure that uh, it's easy for our pedestrians to get around the city as well. So just remembering that um, we have so many different modes of travel that are intersecting here, pedestrians, bicycles, um, our, our shuttles, and uh, the team's really been thinking about all of them. And then for my district specifically, I just wanted to use this opportunity to stress for folks in Mission Hill that the Mission Hill Link, our community um, bus service that runs 10.30 to 6.30 Monday to Friday, um, is free for the duration of the shutdown. Um, so the, the great advantage of that is that if this is a shuttle that's already accessible that gets many of our um, folks with accessibility needs around the hill, across the um, steep gradient. Um, but in this specific situation, it also means that you can ride that from any place in Mission Hill to Brigham Circle to get on the Green Line or to Ruggles to get on commuter rail. So in that triangle kind of between the green and the orange line, that's another um, specific solution for folks out in Mission Hill um, and the surrounding Roxbury JP area. So just wanted to stress for people that the link is free throughout this month. And, uh, and again, um, express my thanks to the whole team and say that I think everyone on the council, Councilor Lara and I are here, but everyone on the council um, is very focused on this issue. And we also want to be conduits for things that you see that maybe aren't working um, and help make sure that we can uh, get through this as well as possible together. So thank you. And uh, I'll turn it over to my colleague, Councillor Lara. Thank you, Councillor Bach, and thank you, um, everyone. My name is Kendra Lara, and I represent District 6, which includes West Roxbury, Jamaica Plain, Eggleston Square, and a precinct in Rosendale as well. Um, first, I just want to thank the mayor and her team for all of the work that they've been doing. I think that what we've seen in the last few weeks has been nothing short of what Chief Yasha described as heroic acts <laughs> um, by the City Hall staff and also some of the MBTA staff that have been supporting us during this time. Um, in spite of those heroic acts, what we're going to see, particularly in in District 6 um, is that with the closure of the orange line and the closure of the green line, uh, our entire district is going to be pretty much blacked out and disconnected from downtown. And in addition to all of our efforts and in spite of those efforts, we're going to be experiencing an information gap for people who are maybe not online, folks whose language is not, first language is not English, excuse me, and for seniors. And so in our office, our goal for the past few weeks has been to do work to close that information gap as much as possible. So on Friday morning, our staff and our volunteers are going to be along the Washington Street route and West Roxbury to make sure that all the information that the city of Boston has been made available is not only posted on all the bus stops, but we're talking to the bus riders um, that are riding the buses into Forest Hills. On Friday at 6 p.m. at the Stony Brook T Station, uh, my office is going to be hosting a community forum and a town hall um, about the Orange Line where people from the neighborhood can join us to come and ask questions and learn about the alternate routes that are available to them during the closure. On Saturday morning, um, our office and our volunteers are going to be knocking on a thousand doors in Jamaica Plain and Eggleston Square to make sure that we are reaching as many constituents as possible and making sure that they have access to all of the information um, that the city has um, made available to them. Our hope is that we can continue to update a travel guide that we are putting together that's going to be available online as time goes. And our staff and our volunteers are going to be present during rush hour from 7 a.m., 9 a.m., and from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. at Forest Hills, Green Street, Stony Brook, and Jackson Square during the first week of the closure as well. So we are doing everything, everything possible to make sure that we're closing this information gap, that we're making ourselves available to our constituents. Our office is also going to be passing out um, Charlie cards. And, you know, one of the things that we've learned, particularly with the COVID-19 pandemic and these type of crises, is that we are all each other's responsibility. And although the city has gone to great lengths to make sure that we're taking care of our constituents. Um, my ask and my invitation from all of our constituents is that you make your neighbors your responsibility during this time as well. So thank you. Okay. Questions? Mayor, a week ago you said in answer to your question you did believe it would be chaos. A week later, do you still feel that way? <laughs> so just to clarify, the original question that was asked by the um, incomparable Karen Regal was how do you avoid chaos? And it is it will be impossible to avoid chaos altogether. It's just the mere fact that this is a time of year when people are coming back to new routines in the fall, going, going back in person to work, getting started with school, 
adding this extra layer of disruption and uncertainty will mean that people's lives will be unpredictable, especially for the first few days as we're all trying to sort out what the schedules are, what the options are. Um, I feel so grateful to our team that we have done everything possible, looked at every single little detail along each of these routes to make it as smooth as possible and to reduce that level of chaos and disruption for our residents. There is still more work to do, as you heard our chief say. So we are going to continue to be on the ground and ensure that I'll be on the shuttle buses, I'll be on the commuter rail, I'll be riding my bike. So every little detail that we see pop up that might not have been able to be planned for and predicted that we can still incorporate into the plans and adjust them in real time as well. You but, mentioned the dedicated bus lanes. I assume those are the ones the city has set up on city roads. You mentioned others by Sullivan Square um, that you're still waiting on the state for. Uh, is that frustrating? How many state roads are we looking at that we still don't have bus lanes set up on in the city of Boston? So I'll um, ask Yasha to jump in in a lot more expertise and detail, um, but from day one, a big priority of the city in terms of supporting this shut down to be able to make major fixes has been to think about how we can do everything within our municipal power to smooth the alternatives. The shuttle buses will be one of the main sets of alternatives to get to the stops along the way. And um, those shuttle buses run on city roads and whatever we can do to ensure smooth boarding and, and, um, and off, what is the opposite of boarding? <laughs> Depart are floating. Okay, smooth. <laughs> Getting off. Okay, whatever we can do. <laughs> Disembarking. Whatever we can do to ensure that people can get on and off of those shuttle buses smoothly. They know which buses to get on. That there's staff on the ground, and that the buses can then move fast on our city streets and the ones that are uh, state state roads, but within the city of Boston. That has been a big part of the BTD Boston Transportation Department's time and planning. And so um, some of these. These are actually for routes that are not shuttle buses in particular either. For example, the 39 bus is a route that runs through JP along a parallel route to some of the stops, and there's going to be additional priority for that bus route as well because we do expect um, and hope that people will seek that as an alternative in addition. Are you looking to make these buses? Do you want to add anything on bus lanes and yeah. frustration? I, I, would, I would just add to your question on, on the relationship with the state. So as the mayor said, Almost every one of the routes, uh, the streets that the shuttle routes will be on is a city street, including Rutherford Ave and Sullivan Square. Those are actually city streets. Um, we have four different uh, design consultants and two different uh, pavement marking and road safety contractors right now who are working to deploy some of the things that I talked about as quickly as they can. Um, that is sort of all the capacity that the city has to do this work, and we are putting it all in to make this shutdown successful. In the case of Rutherford Ave and Sullivan Square, MassDOT has a additional resources that they can bring to bear. They will be striping the Gilmore Bridge, which is theirs, and we've actually asked them to continue that work on our behalf onto Rutherford Ave and into Sullivan Square to make sure that there is a continuous bus priority route there. Well, we'll so this um, we, I don't have an exact answer on that segment. I know that we are trying to line up the contractors. The plans were in, in going back and forth in email yesterday. Um, so certainly uh, we're going to do everything we can to get things in the ground before the shutdown starts. But there will be things that happen next week. Um, it's kind of a, a rolling work in progress. But uh, we are working in close partnership and bringing all the resources we can muster and our partner agencies can muster to make this happen. Yeah. And it's a, sorry, I just want to add one last point on this. I'm so sorry. And I promise, Sean, we will get to your question. Um, just a reminder, the, the bus priority and all the work that the city has been doing to ensure that we are making changes to our streets to make this more possible, it's a reminder that even drivers who are not, who don't usually take the T, your commutes will be affected as well. And so we really just want to ask everyone to be vigilant, pay attention to the roads, watch for cyclists who might be more, um, prominent and, and in, in more numbers as people are seeking alternatives. Your usual drive might be affected because maybe there's a bus lane now that, that you should avoid and, and create space for those buses. And so much of whether a bus lane works is if it's clear for the bus to run down. And so we really need everyone to avoid 
those lanes. Do not park in them. We will be enforcing and ticketing and towing. And so that is very important to be able to move the hundreds of thousands of commuters who are going to be uh, looking for alternatives. Those bus lanes are key. So, and so is the goal to make some of these permanent after the fact, both the, you mentioned pop-up bike lanes and the, this variety of bus lanes? So um, I'll, I'll give an example um, by Copley where everything that we do as a city, we are collecting data, we're collecting feedback from residents, and we're learning what works and what doesn't work. One major feature of letting the buses move quickly uh, from Copley, where one of the major hubs, as you heard, is that the, um, the area, the street, is it Boylston? No, Dartmouth, between the library and Dartmouth. the plaza. Dartmouth, Dartmouth thank you, Councillor. Dartmouth, <laughs> Dartmouth, between St. James and Boylston, the street right in front of the Copley Library, between the library and the plaza, um, between Copley Square, is going to be closed to vehicular traffic and so that buses have a smooth route to run down. We know that that is possible and feasible because the city tested that out as a pilot for 10 days earlier in the summer just to see what would happen if we created public space and allowed for more activity. And it turns out that the numbers that we collected from that pilot um, have given us confidence that this would actually be very helpful for buses to run down and would not create additional uh, major traffic impacts. And so we're going to keep studying and measuring as we go in, in terms of these bus lanes and the changes that are being implemented. Some of them may stick and if, if we have further conversations with community members. Some of them will just be to allow for loading uh, and um, getting off of these buses. How many parking spaces are you taking away? Do you know that? Um, I don't think we have an exact count uh, on that right now. Um, there's uh, a number in the back bay, uh, in particular along that loop around Copley Square. Um, in neighborhoods, if we're looking at JP, for example, uh, this will likely be a very small number, specifically at intersections. So the intersection of La Martine and Boylston Street, for example, in JP, where there will be a large number of shuttle buses turning by the Stony Brook Station, we know we're going to have to take out three spaces at that intersection to widen it enough for the buses to be able to safely make the turn. Uh, we're really looking at this as, uh, you know, what are the what are the requirements of the shuttle bus to operate efficiently? We are giving the shuttle buses priority when it comes to curb space and street space because we know if we don't do that, people will not be able to move in the city. Uh, but we're certainly trying to minimize the impacts that it has to other road users where that's possible. And deliveries for all small businesses that exist just about every neighborhood you're talking about. Uh, have you had conversations with them and what are their issues? We, we, we have. And, uh, you you know, it's moving very quickly, but all of the places where we're doing bus priority, there are alternate locations for loading. Uh, we actually made some changes across from Copley Square to add additional loading space. Uh, out here by City Hall, we have the New England Center and Home for Veterans, who's losing some of the parking right in front of their facility. They are getting additional parking space that has been signed and set up exclusively for them across the street on Court Square. So we're looking at all of this as we go and making sure that we have alternatives in place for people so that they can continue to do business. Just, I, I want to, um, just following up on the outreach to the business community, Chief Idawu has been conducting a lot of these listening sessions, so I'm sure has insights. Sure. Um, so, good morning. Uh, Shigun Idawu, uh, Chief of Economic Opportunity and Inclusion. Really important question about the impact on small businesses, and actually, according to the BPDA, there are about 16,000 uh, Boston small businesses within a half mile radius of the Orange Line uh, stops here in the city. Um, and so, uh, some of the work that we've been doing, uh, in addition to this outreach through our main streets, uh, uh, led by um, uh, Alicia Porcena, who's our director of small business, engaging with community groups on the ground through our business managers, talking directly with businesses, not just uh, the delivery zones that are going to be impacted. We're also talking about getting their employees to work, uh, the owners themselves getting to work, uh, talking about a reduction of foot traffic um, in the area. But taking all these into account, what we're uh, uh, grateful for is the partnership with groups like Small Business Strong, uh, led by Lisk Boston, Karen Kelleher, as well as the Coalition for an equitable economy, hundreds of service providers to small businesses that we're going to be working with on a daily basis uh, throughout this month to provide additional resources, whether it's technical assistance, marketing, um, and, and all other types of services uh, to make sure that they survive uh, uh, through this shutdown. No hay letreros en español todavía. Muchas personas no hablan inglés. Están confundidas. La comunidad hispana sí. está confundida aquí en Boston. ¿Qué mensaje se les ve a ellos? Sí. Um, esa situación es 
muy difícil para todos los residentes, pero, pero especialmente para los pasajeros que no tienen otra manera de transportación y que depende, dependen en el transporte público. Entonces, um, el equipo de municipal aquí y con um, um, líderes en el consejo municipal van a continuar la comunicación con todos los residentes. Um, tenemos información y materiales en um, 12 lenguas <risa> ahora y um, teníamos las um, sesiones inf informativas con todos los líderes de organizaciones que trabajan, que sirven um, comunidades inmig inmigrantes y otros um, de lenguas um, no, no de inglés, um, pero es una experiencia muy difícil para las semanas próximas y entonces necesitamos uh, la continuación de colaboración y comunicación porque si sí hay um, detalles que, um, que pueden um, aumentar lo efuer la, los efu eh, esfuerzos de, de la ciudad y MBTA. Um, Necesitamos la comunicación en el tiempo uh, real actualmente para implementar y para continuar la uh, aumentación. Thank you, Miriam. Muchas gracias. Quiero eh, responder la pregunta un poco. Sabemos que en este momento va a haber una brecha de información para la comunidad latina y por eso nuestra oficina está haciendo todo lo que podamos para asegurarnos de que estamos hablando con la comunidad latina donde ellos se encuentran. Entonces estamos tocando puertas, estamos llamándolos a sus casas, nos estamos eh, en las paradas de Guagua en West Roxbury, también en Jamaica Plain para hablar con las personas. Nosotros en nuestra oficina hablamos inglés y español y estamos haciendo todo lo posible para asegurarnos de que esa información le está llegando a la comunidad latina. Vamos a el viernes en la noche a las 6 pm a, hasta las 7 y media vamos a tener un foro para la comunidad en la estación de tren el Stony Brook eh, va a estar en inglés y en español también yo como la concejal hablo español también eh, la, la, mis empleados en la oficina también pueden ayudar a las personas so, si hay algunas preguntas por favor llámenos pero también estamos contando con la comunidad latina Estamos contando con ustedes lo, para que reporten la información, para que hagan las preguntas y para que vengan y se aseguren de que la información le está llegando en todos los lugares a la comunidad latina. También quiero uh, repetir en español um, que el autobús de la comunidad Mission Hill Link en Mission Hill uh, no cuesta nada este mes durante la uh, cierre de uh, la línea naranja. Entonces, uh, la gente que vive en um, uh, la, uh, el barrio de Alice Taylor y Mission Main uh, se puede utilizar este autobús hasta la línea E en um, uh, verde o a uh, Ruggles, donde se puede utilizar um, la línea violeta, el commuter rail, que también no hay que pagar. Solamente hay que mo mostrar um, uh, la tarjeta Charlie Card y se puede ir al centro sin pagar. Entonces uh, hay muchos uh, recursos uh, muy importantes para nuestra uh, uh, gente que se habla en español. Um, y uh, uh, la última cosa que tengo que repetir es que en um, uh, el sitio de web de la ciudad, Boston, b o s t o n dot g o v slash o r a n g e l i n e en este sitio hay toda la información todas las titales eh, pequeñas en español traducido por la ciudad. Entonces, este es muy importante trabajo que nuestro equipo uh, aquí en la ciudad de Boston ha, um, ha hecho para uh, las ciudadanas uh, y residentes uh, que se hablan español. Gracias. We're going to invite you all to uh, take a look at the traffic management center with us and then follow up separately on questions. But sorry, we're running out of time on this part, but thank you. Thank you.